Continuing with our process scenario, it's important to understand how the decision shape works. There are many instances during system integration when you may need to query the destination system to check for the existence or status of a record. In our example, we're querying Salesforce records and then testing to see if they exist in the database. If it's true and the record does not exist, we want to send it down a unique path to create the record in the database. If the record exists, we want to send it down another path and filter it out of the workflow. We can build this type of condition by using the decision shape, which is located on the logic tab of the shapes palette. Continuing with decision shapes logic. As we learned in the previous slide, decision shapes are commonly used to validate field values or check the existence of data in a destination system. The decision compares two values and routes a document down a true or false path based on the outcome of the comparison. True documents are processed to completion before the false documents are processed. And the compare type can be changed to manipulate the outcome. I'm now going to walk through exercises 14 and 15 to add the decision shape to test the process. Completion of these exercises will end our first process. Many databases produce an error when attempting to enter duplicate records. Most AtomSphere integrations can programmatically prevent duplicating records and are failures against the destination system. The decision shape is a simple way to prevent duplication as it compares values within a doc. The result of the comparison forces the document down a true-false path. In this exercise, we're going to add a decision to query how many records matching those coming from our source exist in the database. If the return value is going to be greater than zero, then the document is going to be filtered out of the process flow. So from the logic tab on the shape palette, we're going to take and drag and drop a decision shape onto the process canvas. All right, for the display name, we're going to put new account question mark. For the first value, we're going to click choose. And in the parameter value window, we're going to select type equals a SQL statement. We're going to choose our connection, which is our Boomi training MySQL connection. The output column is going to be one. The output type is going to be character. We're going to check cache values. And we're going to enter our script here. And when it comes to end user ID equals, this is the value you set in your map shape. So for my example, I'm going to use Boomi Trainer, just as it appeared in my map. And the other example we went over, it being John Smith, it would have been entered like this. Or from my case, I'm going to do Boomi Trainer, and you're going to enter your name here. So below, we're going to create the parameter. And the parameter is going to equal this question mark up top, where name equals. So in the parameter value window, we're going to add a parameter. The parameter type is going to be a profile element. The profile type is going to be XML. And we're going to choose our profile, which is our Salesforce account query response. And for the element, we're going to choose Salesforce account query response. We're going to choose under account underscore C, we're going to choose the name. Once you have all four of these filled out, you can click OK. And we can note that the name parameter has now been added. And we can hit OK. And this returns us to our decision shape. So now we have the display name, new account equals, the first value, our SQL statement, comparison to our second value. So we have to choose our second value, which is going to be a static value of 0. We're going to click OK. We're going to click OK. And we're going to save the process. Exercise 15. Since our decision shape is configured, we have to reorganize the existing flow to meet the results of our decisions logic, which is new account equals, to prevent the new test documents from entering the customer table. So from the logic tab under the shapes palette, we're going to drag and drop a stop sign behind our database. And we're going to make sure that the continue processing other execution paths is checked. And we're going to do the same thing again. OK. And we are going to connect the start shape to our decision. The true path is going to go down our map database. And our false path will go down stop. So now we can save the process. And we're going to execute the process in test mode. And we're going to review our results. And you can see that our, both of our documents wrote as false because our prior tests are, had already uploaded them in our database. So since they were already in our database, it routed it to false. So you can see both documents, and we can look at some of the shape source data for them. So we have our edge communications. Now take some time to complete exercises 14 and 15 as you complete the process prospect tracking.